welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Jay Rosemary, welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Josie. Yeah, I'm (laughs) glad to be here. (laughs) Yes, please tell us a little bit about what you're passionate about right now, what is inspiring you, and who is J. Rose Mary (laughs) Francis? Mm -hmm. That's a loaded question. You sure you want that? (laughs) Yes. Okay, well, I'll just start by saying I'm an emptiness solo mom. I have three adult sons. Right now, I am... I'm usually passionate about a lot of things. Whatever I'm focused on, I'm just in it, right? Right now it's podcasting. So I started podcasting uh, about three years ago and I loved it so much. I love the process so much that I started the second one. I love to travel. Um, I've been traveling since I was 15. I'm not one of those digital nomads yet, but (laughs) that's coming. So that's basically what I do. I spend my days just blogging and podcasting and talking to my sons and trying to see my granddaughters on video. So yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yes, that is wonderful. So I love that you're speaking on being so passionate and fired up about podcasting. Mm. And so that is your superpower right now. And at the beginning of this, we we're talking about how women we are, we are superpowers, just being yes. a woman. Yes. <laughs> so I would love for you to speak on that a little bit about the superpowers and how you found your superpower in podcasting. Okay. <laughs> so the superpower thing on moms I think it it comes out when you become a mom, Mm -hmm. right? Is that because now you have souls to protect. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so the the bear claws come out, you know, a lot of times. And we always have that protective instinct, that, that, that thing that you always have to go that little bit further, you know, when you're working and the boss is giving you grief. You, you don't, you know, well, I used to do it when I was younger, just kiss my teeth and walk out. But <laughs> when I had kids, I couldn't, I wouldn't do that because I was thinking about my kids, mm. you know. So when you're a mother, you think more powerfully, even though it's a stressful time, you know, especially if you're a solo mom. Now with the, with the podcasting, how I, I don't know what it was, you know, I'm a big fan of mindset. And it took me six years to start my first podcast. I knew I should have done it. I knew I wanted to do it in my closet. I was passionate about it. But when it came to getting on the the microphone and putting it out there, I was like, oh my God, I can't do this, you know? Mm. So it took me six years to start. And for a little while, I waffled with the tech. And I'm not a tech novice, you know? I took digital technology in college, but I waffled with the tech. I realized that I wasn't the only one waffling with tech, Mm -hmm. just like I wasn't the only one as a divorced mom struggling with raising children, struggling with myself, you know. And so I got into it. I dug into it. I joined clubs. I took classes from Pat Flynn. I mentored other podcasters. And I'm like, man, I really like this thing. You know, one of the things I do a lot, well, I do for myself is I edit my own podcast. So Mm -hmm. I learn how to edit so I can hear those interviews over again in my head and just get into the craft. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) you see, I'm like, I'm like this with everything I do is like, I just, I just love to just get in the weeds about podcasting. Mm -hmm. And that mindset piece, like you were saying, it took you six years to finally mm-hmm. be like, okay, I'm all in. I'm going yeah. all in. Yeah. I'm even going to do the editing. I'm so all in. And yeah. for a lot of women and moms, particularly getting that confidence, that mindset is huge. So yeah. I would love for you to speak a little bit more on mindset and getting the mindset to go after 
the thing that you can't stop thinking about? Yes, I think one of the biggest thing is that fear, obviously, is fear holds us back. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I've had an opportunity to to look at is that why do those fear exist? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it, it's not just like I'm a speaker is a fear of, uh, afraid of speaking in public. I don't want to talk. I don't want anybody to know what's coming out of my mouth. Right. And, and so a lot of times it's because of past trauma that we haven't dealt with. Mm. Right. Or we thought we dealt with, but it's there, you know, bumping up against our dreams and desires. Right. And I have discovered that one thing is that if you have a message, there's a reason you got the message, Mm -hmm. right? One thing I always take with me is that scripture that says you're a light and you have to shine those light for those who are in darkness to, to see, you know, so don't be selfish and put your light under a bushel. You know, that that's one thing I learned, you know, and, and those, those are things I told myself, you're being so selfish right now. You know, because you, you, you're talking about what you, 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 it's not about you. Mm. Right. The other thing was <laughs> I, I was praying one day and I was talking to God about the, you know, the, the parable with the, the where, where the master gave the five talent, one, five talents, one, two talent, and one, one. And I said, you know, Lord, I want to use my talent. I don't want to be like the one person who went and buried his and didn't use it. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm that one man, that person with the one talent. I'm burying my talent. And it just dawned. It's like, you know, he said to me, well, that's you. you know? And so you have to listen to those voices inside you, you know, because the message comes. Mm-hmm. it's just up to us to hear them you know so I don't know if that answers your question but <laughs> yes it's that I just love love what you said that we are the light and it is yes. our job to shine the light for yeah. others to see it so that we can help them get through mm-hmm. their darkness and yeah. it's not about you huge mm-hmm. yes. and when you can start to look at it from that place it makes it feel more doable yeah. it takes the fear a notch down yeah when you come from that place of service yes so I would love to know with podcasting that fear piece is huge getting your message out there (laughs) is huge so for somebody who is listening a mama that is listening that's like I've always thought about doing maybe a podcast but that fear like I know you're talking about not to be selfish put my message out there put my talent out there but I am terrified shaking in my boots yeah what would be your message to that? I guess one of the things, and I do, like I said, I do empathize with that because, and sometimes it's not even the public we're afraid of. We're afraid of those around us, mm. you know, our friends and family, one who will judge us and we don't want to be judged. And number two, we may have, the message may be about us, mm. right? One of the things that came up when I was, thinking about this podcasting was because I went to a discovery group at my church and we were a group of women. We met for nine weeks and we were, we were given the opportunity to just talk about what was going on in our lives. Right. And that's where I got the idea from to, to start the podcast as solo moms talk. And I thought to myself, this is something I could have done when my kids were younger. And it was like, I said, you know, I really would like to have all single moms have this opportunity mm. and it's like god say hello <laughs> you know you and but i'm like i can't tell people about how mistreated i i felt or you know how i grew up without my mom i can't tell people those things because i'm gonna offend people you know or you know it's too scary are people gonna think bad of me you know so you those things you have to get out of your head Again, it's not about us. And the truth is, you won't believe how many people, how many moms like you went through what you went through, right? And a lot of them are willing to talk about it. I had one lo- young lady, her the boyfriend, she was living with a boyfriend at the time. He locked her out on the street with her two-year-old, a four-year-old <laughs> or something. And that happened to me. I got locked out of my house by my, my ex-husband. I'm a two kids. We got locked out of the house. So there was a lot of 
similarities between a lot of women I interview. So that one takeaway I want you to remember, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You're not the only one with that story. The details might be a little different, but get out of your comfort zone. You achieve nothing in your comfort Mm -hmm. zone except comfort. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. You know, I know it can go on sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that perceived, is that perceived comfort even? Because yeah. if you're not listening to your heart's desire, your soul's desire, your calling on your heart, then you are comfortable, but you're not because it's like, you can't even sleep sometimes. It's mm-hmm. always in the back of your mind. It's coming up for you always. Yeah. And so getting quiet and still and being able to hear that little whisper of like, mm-hmm. do it, you can yeah. do it. Yeah is huge yeah yeah you're always gonna get that calling because it's yours Mm -hmm. yeah and I love that you're speaking on the similarities of the things and the stories that we're sharing we're not alone like there are other people out there that have the same exact story and when you start to tell your story it's crazy what you find and what people (laughs) what people relate to and what touches them and can change a life yes by sharing yeah. our stories. And with that, with podcasting, it's such an intimate way to do that. Mm-hmm. And so if somebody is dreaming of podcasting, is there a top three things that you would say to do to get them on their journey to making that decision for themselves and not have it take so long to actually jump in? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think my number one thing, it would be to don't get hung up on the tech. Mm. Like don't look at other people who are successful successful and say I wonder how they got their sound like that Mm. stuff like that one of the things I I write about this is that when you start a business you're encouraged to have a business plan right and if you start a nonprofit, you're encouraged to write out your mission I think podcasters should write out a mission statement so when you say I want a podcast about I am, you know, I love business. I I would like to train women how to start a business. Do the what, the who, and the why. Just write a mission statement based on those three W's. For one, when you start and you struggle, always go back to that mission statement. Mm. Remember why you wanted to do this. Mm. And if you felt God sent you to do this, put that in the mission statement even if it's longer than it should be, right? Because it's yours. You do what you want with it, right? So the first thing is write a mission statement. The first thing is don't get hung up on the tech, right? The second thing is write a mission statement. And the third thing, pick up your phone, get a record app and record your trailer. Just say, this is my podcast. This is what its name. This is what we're doing. And, And just Put it out there. Mm. <laughs> Even if you did, you don't la- you know, put it on a host or anything, just put it out there. Because once you speak it, it's out there, mm. right? And it's not going to let you go. Trust me, <laughs> it's not going to let you go. So those are my top three. Yes, take that yeah. first step. Yeah, I love that so much. It's so true. If you can get that courage to take that first step, yeah. it will feed you and help you mm-hmm. and pull you forward. So people are talking like, who's going to listen? That is, that was, I mean, for me, when I started my first podcast, that was, who's going to listen to me anyway? Mm. Who cares what I have to say? So that is a question I have for you is how do you start to find the people, the listeners that are going to care about what your message is? Right. So that's where your mission statement comes in. So you want to do this thing. Who do you want to do it for? Mm-hmm. Uh, the experts call it your, your avatar. Mm-hmm. So who is that one person? And it's just one person. It's not 10 million, right? That's, <laughs> that's your download, right? The, but your audience is one person. For me, when I started Solo Moms Talk, I worked with divor- a lot of divorced moms who, you know, they were raising their children alone, struggling with working with, with bosses who were horrible and, you know, they struggled balancing their budgets, just stuff that I'm like, those are the people I wanted to serve. So I picked one of them. And in my head, when I was thinking about topics I wanted to, to present to, to experts I wanted to interview, I thought about the, that one person. 
that's how you find your audience. Then what I did, I went into Facebook. Once I started, I went to Facebook and I joined single moms groups Mm. and I started to communicate with them. Nobody knew about my podcast. I was just talking and empathizing and putting my two cents in. And at one point I was able to say, hey, I'd like to interview single moms because that's my audience. Mm. And the group admin say, okay, go ahead put your, you know, put your request in. And that's how I got a lot of my first few guests, like the first year or two. That's how you find your audience initially. Now Mm -hmm. there's marketing and all of that once you're off and running, but you need that core focus, right? So you could present, you could, you could have the right content for that one person oh so you're talking about killing two birds with one stone i don't even yeah. like that parable <laughs> i said it and i'm like ooh, no and we're not killing birds but going into that solo mom group and helping and empathizing and being that person who's holding space yes and then in turn having them be a guest on your podcast you were also building that building your audience and yes. getting people to be on your show. Oh, yeah, definitely. That is, that is brilliant. So yes. that is also its own marketing piece as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not only Facebook. You can go on Quora. And, and I've done that, gone on Quora and on Reddit to those groups. And just, you know, just make yourself available, mm-hmm. you know, to answer questions and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah, be of service again. That's what it comes yeah. back to, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would love to talk a little bit on the marketing piece because Mm -hmm. a lot of people think, well, I know for me, it's a big thing to do to get into that marketing of your podcast. So now Mm -hmm. you got the confidence, you're putting it out there and you're getting a little bit of traction and you're like, okay, now I want more because you're doing the work and you want more people to hear it now. Where would you start with that marketing piece once you've initially got your base and your avatar and you're one person? (laughs) Okay, yes. So I want to start where I started is that don't not put it out there, because the fear will creep up again. And the imposter syndrome will come again and said, you have it set up, you're you're being hosted, you know, you've interviewed a couple of guests, you have a few episodes out. And you're like, Oh, my gosh, I only have three, four or five episodes. And you know, it's I only have three downloads or whatever it is. Don't let that stop you, mm-hmm. right? I have a, a an Instagram profile and on my Instagram page, I have almost 900 posts. So what I do, I go in and I post about my podcast mm-hmm. or I post about issues relating to my audience, mm-hmm. right? Because that's who I'm addressing, right? I am on LinkedIn. I have a few hundred followers on LinkedIn. I put it there. And one of the reasons I did LinkedIn was because some of the guests I interview are on LinkedIn Mm -hmm. and we know we talk about connecting. So I connected and said, Hey, these are working moms. They're working moms on LinkedIn. So here I go. I do do something that a lot of experts tell you, you know, don't really do it when you start, but I do Facebook ads because I want to reach single moms all over the world. Mm -hmm. Right. So I do cheap five dollars a day, sometimes three dollars a day. I just do cheap little ones, a few thousand clicks. That's how I reached India. Mm. You know, India is one of my top audience, you know, and there are 13 million single moms in India. So that's a good market for me. Wow. You know, so that is the good thing is to, you need to research your audience once you get beyond that one person. Just get out there. Go, just do what you can to get it out there. Mm-hmm. One other thing I did was I started a meetup for solo moms when I first started. And I had monthly meetings with them. So there are a few things you could do that don't cost money. You know, the Facebook ad is just it's just a personal preference. So those are things. And I'd like to say do videos from the beginning. You're talking, get on video, Zoom or whatever. And, and just do the videos, even if you're not using them now, because, you know, later you may want to start a YouTube channel mm-hmm. and you're going to miss those videos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That. Yeah, so. All right. Yes. I love that. I love that so much. And I also love that you said, 
do the video, even if you don't think you're going to yeah. use them, yeah. do them. Because yeah. yeah, my first podcast, I was like, no, I'm never going to use those. But now I don't have them. So yeah. it's good to start out and you get more comfortable too. The more you mm-hmm. do it each time, mm-hmm. it gets more comfortable mm-hmm. to do it. So if you start practicing now, 10 episodes in, you're going to be rocking it. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that for me, interviewing came pretty natural. So I was very I'm thankful for that. That is a superpower of yeah, mine. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, but a lot of people come to me and say that that is the hardest part of the podcast. I'm just going to do solo episodes because that interview part is so daunting. Mm-hmm. So I would love to hear your take on that. I think interviewing is one of the best ways, one, to add depth to your podcast, mm-hmm. right? It adds depth. And two, it makes you more of an expert Mm. on whatever it is you're you're podcasting about. So one, it benefits your audience because you're giving them more to chew on. Mm. And two, it benefits you because, you know, you're learning more. Mm -hmm. You know, I know so much about the the little things that I was dealing with as a solo mom, you know, the the health issues, you know, just different issues. I know so much more about it because of the people I interview. I want to focus on the benefits Mm -hmm. and and let you, so, you know, people can see that it it has a lot more pros than cons. The Mm -hmm. con is, again, it's just the fear of doing it, right? It gives you the opportunity to network and talk to people you wouldn't normally be Mm -hmm. talking to. I mean, I'm talking to people from India, New Zealand, Australia, just Africa, just all over the world, right? So there are so many benefits to interviewing. The other thing is that I have like 20 interviews already done waiting to be published. Mm -hmm. So you won't lack content when you interview Mm -hmm. people, right? You may struggle a little bit when you have to come up with ideas unless you do a, you know, a content plan. You may struggle a bit, but when you interview people, you always have material Mm -hmm. because that one interview, you could split it in two and make different things out of it, blog about it, just do different things. I think we shouldn't shy away from that if that's what we want to do, Mm -hmm. because there are a lot of benefits to it. So true. And I love that you're talking about content repurposing and using it for other things. Yeah. So how important do you think content repurposing your podcast is? I think it's very important. One, again, it spreads the message wider. And two, it allows you to not to be all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the term is omnipresent. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I don't know where that word comes from, but I feel a little bit weird applying it here. But A lot of people say that you should be omnipresent on the internet, Mm -hmm. but you know, you're one person, you know, you may not be at the point where you can have a team. How are you going to be omnipresent? Get your podcast out there all over the place. There's TikTok, there's Facebook, there's blogging, there's videos, there's YouTube, there's all these things. Use that one piece of whether it's an interview, you know, when you do an interview, let's say on health and wellness whatever that focus is, you could split that a million ways, right? Mm. You could do video clips on IG Reels, Facebook, and you could do a blog and talk about it. Three different, you could do different blog pieces on that. I think repurposing, you can't not have content, right? Mm -hmm. So, So use the content you have and spread yourself. Just, Just do it, you know? short clips here and there. I, I, I don't always take my advice, but, <laughs> but I know that's the best thing. That's the most important thing to do word, you know, just, just get it out there because you want to spread that message mm-hmm. and you want to go where your audience is. That's, that's the other thing I'd like to say. The caution is that if you're on, if you don't think your audience is on TikTok, then don't do TikTok unless you want to do TikTok. But for the sole purpose of your podcast, if, if that's not where your audience is, don't do it. Same with any other platform, Facebook, IG, whatever. You know, that's my thought on repurposing. Yes. And so for you, that blogging piece has been really helpful and useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the blogging now, 
because I like to write. I love to write. Mm-hmm. I'm always, I've been writing since I was, yeah, hi, I'm a grasshopper. <laughs> and so what I'm learning now is something that I haven't done in the past is that with blogging, you could monetize your podcast, right? With affiliate links, you could collect emails with a blog. You can offer freebies to your, your audience So blogging now gives you another platform that's a partner to your podcast Mm -hmm. that allows you one to again, get the message out to, but two to monetize. You could Mm -hmm. also do Google AdSense, you know, where people could click on your, you know, they click the link and you earn an income. Mm -hmm. So I think blogging now helps you to, to, to really focus on the monetary value of, what you're doing on the podcast. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. And that that's what also keeps you going because when you, you feel that passion by getting, yeah. by making money to keep going because yeah. it's not free. <laughs> no, no, none of it's free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It sounds free, but it's not. <laughs> it does yeah. sound free. Yeah. But it's not. So doing that and monetizing the podcast is such a huge step. And so I would love a little bit on the blogging. Are you using just a transcript from your podcast or are you creating fresh content based on the ideas that you get from the content in your podcast or how? I Are you approaching it? Yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't come around to using the transcript yet. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I'm, I'm one of those people. I, I look at the transcript. I'm thinking those aren't even my words, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> so I'm thinking, but so I'll that, and that's another reason I listen to the interviews and edit it because it gives me ideas on what to write about, mm-hmm. and then I go and do my keyword research and all that stuff, and write on whatever topic is pumping out of my heart. Mm-hmm. You know, so I really approach all of this. I, I'm, I think my personality is more the emotional, you know, the creator. Mm-hmm. So I, I will think about that topic in the contents of either what's going on with me right now or what's going on out there, whether in my audience or in the world. Mm-hmm. And then I'll just write a piece on it. Of course, I will try to incorporate affiliates that one will benefit my audience mm-hmm. and look natural mm-hmm. in that blog piece so the blog the blog pieces look look different mm-hmm. you know I like to because I'm a mindset person I've done meditation I've done yoga and so I just changed blogs so I have a new blog now but I have pieces I have like 19 pieces written and the different things you could do to have a healthy mind and body mm-hmm. so and all of those will have affiliate links in them, one, but they all benefit an o- my audience because, mm-hmm. you know, solo moms, they're going to need all the help mm-hmm. they can get. And if they can find that stuff in one place, everybody wins. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a win-win in that way. I yeah. love that. Yeah. And I love that you say mindset is so important to you because mindset, whether you're a solo mom or you're not a solo mom, Mm -hmm. that mindset piece is carries you and Mm -hmm. gets you through the day. So I love how you're speaking on yoga, meditation, and that has helped you with your mindset. So if you had like three top things to start getting that mental clarity and that mental focus, what would you say would be your three tools that you've used? Number one is journaling, because I mean, it's something I do naturally because I've been doing it for so long. But I find that when stuff's starting to feel like they're hitting the fan or you just, you you know, your head so jammed up with stuff Mm. that when I write, I start to write and write and write and write and write, you know, just free write, free fall writing that it empties my mind. Mm. And now I'm able to think because all that stuff that was up here is now on paper Mm -hmm. right? and I can go back to it later and review it. So journaling is my number one. The second is meditation. I've done um, transcendental meditation. It's very time consuming. So a lot of people don't like it for that, but I love transcendental meditation. And then the third one is walking. I mentioned yoga, but I much prefer walking. I walk, I did like 2,800 steps, 28,000 steps one day because I just wanted to walk in mm-hmm. nature. And when is if, if the sun is out, I'm walking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I recommend those three things. 
And if you have time, I'd like to tell a quick story. Yes. One time in the middle of when I was parenting, my kids were early teens and I was living in New York City and I was working all day on the train, you know, just all day thing. I'll go home, I'd sleep, I'd get up in the morning, shower, go to work and every, you know, repeat, rinse and repeat every day. And one day I was running for the bus. Well, I was trying to run for the bus and my legs would not move. My knees, my joints, nothing would move. And because I wasn't taking care of myself. Mm. Right. And I determined then that I was going to do something about it. But the most the, the only thing I could do right away was to start walking. I would walk to the train station instead of taking the bus to the train station. On Saturdays, I would walk. To, I would walk for miles mm. and I had a car parked, but I would leave the car and walk. Those are my top three. <laughs> yes, those are great. Those are yeah. great. That brain dumping and yeah. journaling and meditating. meditating. And that is huge. And there's so yeah. many different types of meditation yeah. that if, like you were saying, that transcendental transcendental meditation, meditation is, long. Is, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is long. So there is mindfulness. There is all sorts of meditations that you can look up and mm -hmm. start to just get silent and present with yourself yeah. for sure. It's so important. Yeah. And yes, I have one last question for you if you mm -hmm. have the time for it. So we're talking about creating something while being a solo mom, while being a mom time. That is the big one for yeah. a lot of people is we feel we don't have the time. We yeah. don't know how to make the time. And it just seems a little overwhelming or a right. lot overwhelming. <laughs> so, yes. so how can people start to carve out that time to create? Okay. So there, there are certain ways. I read a statement a long time ago, and it's something I've experienced is that what you focus on grows in, you know, in significance, right? And a lot of times we say we don't have time, but we have time for certain things that, and, it, and it's probably because we're tired. Because when you sit down and spend four or five hours watching Netflix, it's time you could use for something else. Mm -hmm. But I understand why a mom, a single mom raising kids, dealing with all the issues that they have to deal with, would want to just veg out, mm -hmm. right? But you have to get out of that. You have to get out that mindset. Watch an hour of Netflix if you want to, but take the rest of the time that you have. I mean, I've interviewed moms who, while their kids sleep, they get up at two, three o'clock in the morning. And that's when they do two or three hours of work. You know, that extra work that, you know, the side hustle or whatever that they needed to do before they get ready, get their kids ready and go to work. <laughs> you know, so... When to start focus on what that purpose is, whatever it is you want to do, like podcasting, you know, and, and I think podcasting is a lot easier than people make it out to mm. be. At least starting it is, <laughs> right? Don't be perfect. I, I was, you know, going on about listening to people thinking that my voice sounds horrible. Nobody wants to hear my voice. Pick up that phone, record something, record your trailer. You can find the time to do whatever your mind, you know, whatever your mind wants to find time for. You can find that time. Mm -hmm. Priorities. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just have to. And, and when you start, you realize, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. You know, I'm, and if I have the time, I'd like to say, you know, I was going to school, working full time. And I was in New York City on the train, two hours to work back and forth. Right. I had a coach and they said to me, because it was to complaining about, I can't exercise. I don't have time and all this. And he said, she said, can you wake up one hour earlier? I was already waking up at 4 a.m. And I thought about it. And I said, you know what? Yeah, I can. I went to bed at 8, woke up at 3. I was at work at 6 a.m. I started at 9. And I took that three hours, sat in my boss's office and studied. Because that's the only time I could study. But it was quiet and there was nobody around. So, Yeah. You, you just have to, you just have to, you make yeah. it work. You decide it's important. You have that big why that's pulling you and pushing you forward. Yes. And you make the time Oh, this conversation has been so enlightening. And even as a podcaster myself, I have gotten some gold nuggets. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I would love you to speak on where our listeners can support you, where they can go and listen to your podcast and all the things. 
Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you for having me. So I have two podcasts. One is Solo Moms Talk, and that's S O L O M O M S Talk. And the second one is Tools of the Podcast Trade. Those two podcasts are just anywhere you could, you know, anywhere mm -hmm. podcasts are. And uh, I have a website for each of them, solomomstalk.com and toolsofthepodcasttrade.com. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm on Instagram at, at jrosemary1. Yes. And I always love to give you the floor for the last bit of the podcast. Now that we've had this glorious conversation about podcasting, about mindset, I would love if anything is on your heart that you feel called to share with the mamas that are listening to the Make Life Fed podcast today. With mamas, I want to tell you, one, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to parent in silence. That's my motto. You know, you're not alone. And a lot of people repeat that a lot, but it is true. You know, reach out to somebody just for a talk. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter if people get in your business. It's okay. Unless you know that person don't have your best interests at heart. You know, just reach out to, even if they're a stranger, reach out to me at J. Rosemary mm -hmm. One. Reach out to mm -hmm. Josie. You know, just, you know, just to chat. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes we feel nobody want to hear our thing. But sometimes... You know, there are people who will just listen and they're not going to tell anybody else. Mm -hmm. They just, they will just listen, give you a listening ear. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to talk about whatever it is you're going through because you're mm -hmm. not alone. That one's huge. That one's huge. It yeah. takes a village, but we have to, we have to be the ones to open our arms to receive yeah. it. Embrace the village. <laughs> yes, embrace the village. Yeah. Jay Roseberry, thank you so much for your time, for your wisdom, and what you're doing in this world. You are, thank you are awesome. <laughs> thank you very much, Josie. So are you. I appreciate you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for listening to the make life fun show i hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little little gems little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart that you are not just listening but you're going to do something about it i want you to be fired up so yes so we come once a week come back listen to us here we are on all podcasts places you listen we are also on youtube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. <laughs> and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us. Leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.